it, you know, we, we got to watch time, so I'll let him answer, but uh, we got to make it quick. I mean, I, I would I would just answer it this way. I think there's a lot of things within our tourism master plan that square up um, specific to cultural tourism. Um, let, let's not forget that the city of Rock Island does have an amazing array of assets within this space, as does a lot of our other communities, too. And we're going to continue to promote um, our regional assets, and I know we've laid out a, an asset list and inventory of what those things are. And I think whatever we can do to continue to be your, your partner and promote those, um, we will. As it relates to specifics on tours and some of those things, um, I think we'd have to spend a little bit more time with the city and determine what that right approach is. But we stand ready to, to work with the team and, and, and Todd and his professional staff to get there. Thank you. Okay, Thanks. we are out of time. We've got to make sure we get the other uh, presentation. Mayor Tomes, thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And everybody coming here, spending your time and all the hard work you're doing. Uh, it's been great to see the collaboration of all the different organizations. And it's, it's working right, very, very well compared to what it was a little before. Thank you, sir. Appreciate yes. It. Mr. Bartels. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Pull this up. Is someone back there from IT? <laughs> no? There it is. All right, Sunset Marina. Everyone likes to talk about Sunset Marina. <laughs> I know we've, and I, I don't, I say that jokingly, but it, it is an important topic. Um, I know I've been up here previously talking about this. Um, you know, we've, we've done some um, presentations in the past. I do want to um, uh, mention that we have uh, Greg Wakecamp from Edgewater Resources. He should be on the call um, remotely. Um, Edgewater Resources was selected to do the, um, well, if, if we're, or we're approved, to do the engineering um, for this project. And they also completed the feasibility study that was completed back in February. So he is on the uh, call tonight. If there's any questions for Edgewater Resources or any questions that I can't handle, as he is the um, professional expert in marina business. So I asked him to attend. So tonight, some of the topics that we want to go over, um, just a little bit of background about the marina, kind of going back before the 400 dock damage. Um, some things that have been talked about, about selling and leasing previously, we'll touch on that. Um, we'll talk about the feasibility study and, and over what, what the condition assessment um, re reported and uh, the recommendation that was given from Edgewater. Um, we'll go over the proposed project scope that we brought back to discuss tonight and then talk about some cost estimates for that and then funding options. So with that, I know this is some small print, but there's a lot there. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll read it for you if you can't see it. So Sunset Marina was originally purchased in 1948. Um, it's been uh, in one form or another since the land was purchased in 1948. Um, the city purchased the buildings, docks, and other ma marina infrastructure for 434000 in 1980, and operation of the marina was incorporated into the regular city operations as an enterprise fund at that time. Um, in 2010, previous staff had informed the council that the marina was in need of major infrastructure improvements and explained that the marina budget could only support um, the day-to-day -day operations and existing debt service. So there were options discussed at that time, um, in, including selling, leasing, and maintaining ownership of the marina. And ultimately, the staff recommended to council to consider the sale or lease option, um, and an RFP was advertised. And through that RFP, what was, what was found out was there was two interested parties, and um, they, they had interest, but they didn't, I guess they had interest, but they really didn't have interest because of the amount of uh, capital improvements that were needed. Um, which included dredging, um, 400 dock replacement, electrical upgrades, all the same things that we're talking about tonight were needed back then. Um, so during the 2019 flood, the 400 dock was damaged and it was kind of what has spurred this new conversation about um, replacing the dock and doing improvements. We didn't want to look at just doing the dock without with needing further improvements, um, including you know the older docks that need decommissioned and electrical upgrades, and the big one being dredging. 
Um, so as part of that, the council back in February approved Edgewater Resources to do a feasibility study. And uh, the condition assessment stated that the existing docks have exceeded their useful life. The electrical utilities were not compliant with current codes, and there was some ADA, ADA accessibility issues and the need for dredging. In summary, Edgewater recommended maintaining city ownership, maintaining third party operations, and initiating a full renovation of a smaller facility. And during that, that um, feasibility study that was done back in February, um, it was the council's recommendation or what the council's um, uh, wanted to see was us come back with a proposed project scope showing kind of an aerial map of what the, the project would look like, some costs associated with that, and then obviously funding options, which is, which is why we're here. So, so with that, the project scope, um, obviously we would be replacing the 400 dock that would allow 78 new slips. Um, we would look at decommissioning docks 200, um, the mar marina maintenance dock, and docks 600 through 900. So and I'll, on the next page, I'll show you that kind of an aerial. Um, six, 600 through 900 are beyond their useful life. There are safety concerns with dock boards, um, the, the dock structures themselves, metal is, is um, in bad shape, the floating um, structures underneath are, are some in some areas missing. It's the old styrofoam type that you see floating around areas of the river currently. Um, uh, we also, the, the dredging um, would be part of this project, uh, dock 400 and areas out to the river channel, including areas around docks 100, 300, and Lithwell area. So docks 100 and 300 primarily have the bigger boats, I'll call it. Um, and then the Liftwell area, obviously we need to get boats to and from the Liftwell in and out so they can put in and take out at beginning of season and end of season. So those are the, the, the areas of most concern when we're talking about dredging. And I'll show that on the next slide as well. The marina um, office roof needs replaced. Um, through the years, there's been some patching and, and you know some repairs done, but there's never been a full roof replacement. And um, that time is, is here. Uh, and when we're looking at this big project scope, I wanted to make sure to include that in this, in this project. Also, part of this project would be electrical upgrades to docks 100 and 300 and upgrades to the land side um, as well, which would be mean raising the electrical up above the um, flood elevations so that when we have floods like we just experienced, they would no longer be damaged and uh, we would not have to go back and, and basically clean out everything, dry everything out, and have it reinspected. They, they would be above that elevation. The scope that we're proposing would decrease the size of the marina from 395 slips to 222 slips. So currently, um, in the, I'd say the past three years on average, the most we've ever had um, occupied was about 225 slips rentals. That's at the peak season, July, August, beginning of September when everybody's out boating. Um, but that, that, that's pretty much the highest number we've had. I mean, we have had higher in that 300 area, but it, it's been a long time. And that 395 slips, that's not including what 400, when 400 dock was in. So if you add another 78, we had over 450 slips at the marina at one time. So this is an aerial of the proposed scope. Um, let's see if I can work this pointer here. Yeah, there it is. So um, you've got dock 200 and then the, the marina maintenance docks right in here. Those are the um, areas that we're talking about de decommissioning and removing along with docks 600, 700, 800, and 900. These are all beyond their useful life and, and, and bad condition. Um, dock 500 here is the best useful or the best dock that would remain. Um, it currently has several boats on it that, that lease slips. It's, it's our, one of our uncovered um, docks. And then dock 400 would obviously be new here. And that's where the, that's where 400 dock was originally. Um, the area shown in the darker area is where we're looking to actually complete the dredging. Dredging has to be completed for the 400 dock to even install that. So if you're going to do 400 dock, you're going to pay for some sort of dredging regardless. And then, as I mentioned previously, the area out to the channel of the river would be dredged in this project scope. And the area in lighter shading, 
So when Edgewater proposed the um, project scope and the cost, which you'll see here in another few slides, they originally posed, proposed $500,000 in dredging, but I increased that myself by another $500,000 to just account for additional dredging. We know we're going to need it. We're probably not doing enough with a million, but it's it's um, it would it would at least with a million it would make an impact. Um, and again, if you ask boaters currently down there what their biggest concern is, is whether they can really actually boat and get out to the river. So dredging really is probably one of the more important pieces of this project, more so than the, the putting in a 400 dock uh, or the electrical upgrades. So um, that's the project scope. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, dock 200 and the maintenance dock, these are, would, would be decommissioned. Um, this, this dock here, this marina area, uh, marina, this is where a marina yard worker, Chad Mata, he's um, been with the city for like 20 years, but he, they, they stockpile like their barge sits in there and some tools and whenever they need to go out and do work to the docks, they, they, that's kind of their main hub and they, they you know, deploy from there and, and do their repairs or whatever work they need in the marina. But as you can tell, it's in terrible shape. It's been like that for some time and it, it needs removed. Dock 200 on the left here, um, again, you can see it's raised up. Um, that's, that, this picture is in a very low water time, which was last fall when that picture was taken. But again, the, the struts are all bent. Um, the, the boards all need replaced. The electrical is in bad shape. Um, so here's the cost estimate. The lift well picture, just for an image, there's nothing proposed with the lift well. It's, it's an old dinosaur, but it does the job. It's, it's, I think it's like from 1980. It's probably when it was part of part of the piece that we bought when we bought the marina in 1980. But we can get parts for it, and it works well. Um, so this is the project scope. We're looking at about 4.1 million. As as mentioned earlier, I um, increased the dredging cost from 500,000 to a million. Um, the 400 dock replacements about a million and a half. Uh, it, it, we put a 10% contingency in there. Um, we hope that that wouldn't be needed, but again, it, it, we need to have a contingency in there. Even the mobilization cost um, is a little high, but again, we're, we're, these are just estimates and we're not sure, so we wanted to make sure that we, we covered ourselves as far as costs go. So funding sources, um, we have the FEMA grant. It's about 1.9 million. This grant is the 75-25 um, 75 percent funded by FEMA, 25 percent required by the city for a match. And those dollars there is kind of what the breakdown would be if the project cost came in about what we're, are shown. Um, our, our 25 percent match would be 474,000. Um, ARPA, we have about 976,000. We originally had a million, but we paid for the feasibility study with ARPA funds for 24,000, which is why that number is a little bit lower. Um, and then additional funding that we would look to fund for these projects um, or for the deficit that you're going to see on the next slide. Obviously, debt service is the first one that we would um, that comes to mind when we're looking at f funding a deficit. Um, the port district funding, um, you know, we're hopeful that that gets approved here in the next few weeks, hopefully. Um, that, that would aid towards future improvements, not necessarily what we're talking about tonight, but if there were maybe future dredging needs or future um, expansion, if, if um, you know, all these boaters came back from all these vast new improvements, um, that, would, that would help with that. So the, the, the possibilities are, I wanna say endless, but um, it's a good opportunity to, to receive funding once that bill would be approved. Um, we are looking at rate increases. We'll talk about that here shortly um, to help fund this project deficit as well. Um, our, our rates, oh, I'm get, kind of getting ahead of myself. The important thing on this slide is in red. Um, FEMA requires that all these project costs are paid up front by the city and then FEMA reimburses after the project is completed. So we have to have this money up front available to pay the contractor and complete the project before we get reimbursed through the FEMA. And that can take some time to get reimbursed through FEMA as any federal project would. So these are the rate increases that we're looking at. Um, our current rates are um, all over the place, I'll call it. There's, there's um, 
I want to say there's at least 10 different rates. There's uncovered, there's covered slips, there's water, there's no water, there's meter, there's no meter, power, no power. Um, so it's, it's hard to, to kind of compare the current rates to the proposed rates. Um, even the slip sizes that Edgewater, then these proposed rates came from Edgewater, they are act in the feasibility study from February. So there's, these are not new rates that you're seeing tonight. But um, the, uh, lost my train. Oh, so the slip sizes, our current slip uh, sizes for the rates are like 26 foot or maybe 36 foot or 42 foot. So they're a little bit different as far as the size goes. Um, but cost in general, from my quickly looking at a percentage increase, could range anywhere from 10 to 40 to 50 percent increase in, in rates, depending on your slip size. So they are significant. But as Edgewater pointed out in their feasibility study, they're, they're what the market bears and the local market bears. So um, we wouldn't be placing ourselves way above other marinas in the area. Um, we would just be putting ourselves where we should have been all along. Um, and you can see from the proposed revenue from what we're proposing with these rates would bring in about $170,000 in additional revenue. That's granted, that is, those rates and those, those revenues are based off of 100% um, occupancy, which we don't have currently. We would hope to get there. Um, the target, as uh, Edgewater pointed out in their feasibility study last February, or this February, was 95%. We're currently at 60%. But the reason we're at 60% is People can't get their boats out. There's repairs that are needed done. And if, these, if this work's not done, they're gonna go elsewhere. So um, you'll, you'll see that decline in, in occupancy if nothing's done. So, so looking at eligible funding and the estimated deficit, we have a project total about 4.1 million. The FEMA grant and ARPA funding, which leaves us a deficit of about 1.7 million. The area highlighted in yellow is uh, eligible FEMA expenses. So if the project were to come in higher, FEMA would match that cost up to the 75%. It's, it would be on a sliding scale. So that's the FEMA number is not just 1.4. If it came in at 2 million, they would put, contribute 75% and our match would go up to of 25%. But, I, but just for purposes of this slide, I wanted to keep it at that number that FEMA is currently proposing or allowed. Um, so yeah, 1.7 million is the projected deficit. Next steps, um, we would bring back if, if everyone would want to move forward and is in favor of this concept and this project scope, we would bring back the engineering services contract at the May 22nd meeting for approval. Um, the cost that we showed in the slide of 244,000 is what that cost you would be approving that night. Um, that is for the design of everything that we've talked about tonight. It includes the dredging components as well. Um, but that work has to get done before anything can move forward. Um, we would look to identify additional funding sources as mentioned, um, work with the finance department and amortization schedule and what that might look like. Um, and then obviously establishing a new rate model um, to match the local market as we, we touched on as well earlier. Um, the contract with F3 Marina is up in September, so we would look to negotiate that contract um, either with, with F3, you'd have to look at their contract to see if there's an extension clause in that. If not, we would go out for another um, RFP process for that. Um, and then construction, if approved, would, would begin in early 2024. So I know that's a lot in a, in a quick amount of time, but um, we've been talking about this um, since for a while now. Uh, again, we had a feasibility sent in February, and um, at that time, council asked us to come back with, with this scope, and that's what we've done tonight. So I'll open it up to questions if, if there's any questions. I have a couple. Yeah. So on one of your slides, uh, you showed that, that the, uh, the dredging was going to be along the 400 and then out to the, uh, the entrance to the marina. Is it, am I to understand that the Corps then will be responsible for doing the entrance from the river itself into the marina? Yeah, that, you, they're taking it outside the entrance a little bit there, but uh, the, yeah, the Corps comes from like probably somewhere right in here down. And actually part, part of that 
the shaded area, the core is technically responsible for. Again, this is just a conceptual drawing. Right. There, there probably is some overlap and responsibilities between the core and the city. Um, but through the Safe Harbor Act from 1950 something, um, we were required to um, have a shelters, a place to tie boats to for docking, and um, a, a, an area to pull boats in and out. And their, their share was doing the dredging of that area. Okay. And so, yeah, the, we would be reaching out to the core to do that. We have been reaching out to the core to do that, and we've been unsuccessful. So we do have some meetings set up here. Um, I don't know if it's this week or next week, um, but we're going to discuss the, that very thing. Um, so we're, we're moving towards that, but it's a slow process. Okay. And, uh, and, and I know it's too early to, to even imagine what our ROI would be on a project like this because we don't know. There's no way to know until you get, you're into it for a year or two and you see what the occupancy is going to be like. But, I mean, I'm pretty familiar with the bottom of that lake, and it is it needs a lot more work than what, than what we're showing. I, I know that we brought in uh, a lot of the bass fishermen uh, at one time, and, again, that equates to tourism dollars because they're out there buying gas, buying food, and, and staying in our hotels. So, I mean, it's at some point, I think we're going to need to look into the northern part of that, uh, the pond area or the lake area, if you will. And I don't know if that is just a pipe dream or, or we're just going to focus on the in and out to the slips. And you're talking about dredging, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, there, there's dredgings needed. We've mentioned that. Um, uh, in a, a presentation done in 21, we we estimated there's about $5 million in dredging. But we're looking at the bare minimum here to bring right. back the marina and be able to do the 400 dock, get boats in and out. Um, and that's what we feel is needed. Um, and when the ARPA allocation project request started, Public Works submitted a request for $3.5 million for the marina, and we got a million. If we had that $3.5 million, we'd be looking pretty good right now. But right. I know there's other, other needs, and, and certainly we understand that. But, um, yeah, this is just the bare minimum to, to get it back to and, and what that would, we're proposing. That would be hopes that, Matt, once again, with this port district and everything else, that potential to grant writing to be right. a grant to maybe do those kind of things. Okay. Um, and last, so. Lastly, I just want to ask, what, what if we do away with the maintenance stock, uh, there will maintenance, maintenance will continue to need to be done from time to time. What, what, do you have a backup plan for how to, to replace that? or? Yeah, we, we would hope to have um, an open slip for the, for the barge um, with, with the existing slips. Um, and we can always pull, pull it out and, you know, make, make another area somewhere near the office shop. or um, Yeah, we have, we have other options for that. And I would hope that, that we would at least consider, because I know at the point on the upper left-hand corner of that previous picture, um, this one, there is, a, there is a rock wall that kind of goes out into the channel itself, which it basically is a big scoop for any, any of the uh, silt and stuff that's coming down to be just funneled into our marina and causing us more, uh, more issues. Yeah, the there's future. there's not much use going on with that current structure there, <laughs> that it benefits the city or the marina right. at all. So yeah, we can certainly find another area to do what we were doing out of that. No, I was talking shack. about the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. There's there, there's no wing dam out there. It actually, where it does is there's a rocks. slough. There's a slough yeah. uh, that goes along uh, side over to the, goes to the Rock River. That was dammed up uh, a number of years ago uh, to get access out to the end to the sign out there. And so whether that can be removed or not, it's not part of the scope at this point. And that's all, that would be a core issue, would it, would it not? Because that's out into the river, river itself. No, there's nothing out in there. There's no uh, uh, wing dam or, or pile of rocks or rocks out into the channel. Okay. Uh, there's a pile of rocks out there that a tow made uh, on the upper side, uh, but it's not an actual lateral dam. Uh, there was proposed at one time when we got a grant for a million dollars back a number of years ago, to yeah, do back that in 2004 2004 to do that to keep it from flowing in there but that and, never happened and what's interesting about that study it was a study to do to do that and what they actually found was that by doing what was proposed and trying to keep the material from coming back in the marina it their studies shown that it wouldn't really even help 
Really? Okay. So it would still curve back around. Okay. So, you know, probably wouldn't benefit from doing that million dollar project anyway. Okay. Thank you for your input. Yes. So what would it take and how long would it take to get an updated um, spreadsheet of potential revenue at various levels of occupancy, you know, where we're at now, graduated up to 95%, along with recognizing the new costs or fees for the remaining 142 slips and then laying out all the expenditures of our operating costs, our maintenance costs, which we never used to include for many years, and debt service. We, we still have some debt on the marina, plus the debt for, I mean, I don't know how we go forward in paying where this 1.7 deficit, 7 million deficit is going to come from. But wherever it comes from, it should be debt service that's paid back. So what would it take to get so you, pro forma? A pro forma, is that what you're talking about? Okay. Um, we could probably have that back before the May 22nd meeting. Yeah, I, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'd agree with Mike. We could work on that and have a, a detailed pro forma, including debt, whether there's any other contributions that could be made to reduce in that cost. But I got to say that at this point, I'm not sure. I think I would view this kind of like as a, as a park, a city park or whatever, that the capital investment we make into it is not going to, this is not going to generate enough revenue to pay for it. This is not going to be a, something that is self-maintaining. Um, the capital investment in it will be something we take out of whether it be general fund or whatever uh, it is versus rental for the slips. The rental for the slips should be able to maintain it in decent shape, but not pay off debt. Um, just like what we've, we've done in a lot of cases with parks, with uh, the uh, golf courses, we've done with uh, RIFAX and a number of those situations is that you make that uh, capital investment um, without having to pay back on that, but you have a source of being able to maintain it. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. I mean, I think. Right. You do need to look on return and investment, but you also have to look at return on opportunity. I mean, we all know going into this, it's going to cost money. You're never not you're not going to get it back, but it draws people in. And we, we just had a big presentation on tourism and how do we bring people in? And you know, you talk about, yeah, it's great to walk around and look in the historic district and have all these tours and everything. But this is also a big opportunity for tourism and to bring people in and to really showcase our city. And so if you want to look at destinations and where people could come, I mean, without a doubt, this, this is a big one in Rock Island. And ancillary businesses. You know, once again, to name names, you got Ted's Boatorama and Unley Marine is two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the jobs it creates, the revenue uh, that they bring to the city um, is, is two, let alone some fuel and everything else that people use uh, for their boats. Um, and so there's ancillary business that it brings to the uh, to the community also. You'll remember during the feasibility study, Greg quantified some of those direct and indirect benefits operating the, the marina in terms of jobs and revenue. I mean, it's an absolute sunk cost either way. I mean, you're going to put it in to hopefully get the revenue. If we don't put it in, people are going to leave. I well, mean, yeah. and continue to leave. That's right. But so we should one. just close it. The other issue too, though, it, if um, Currently, there's not much value there. Yeah, there's but if nothing. you make the investment and want to consider selling or leasing it in the future with those improvements made, because that's what kind of stopped it back in 2010 was, oh well, we were very interested, but we don't have the capital to make these improvements, and neither did the city. And so, if you make those, it makes it a lot more attractive to those type of private marina companies. Absolutely. I think the uh, you know we currently operated the deficit. The, the goal of the performer would be to try to not in to increase that. Uh, anymore correct yeah. mm -hmm. so I have another question for our city manager yeah. so what recommendation do you have where do these funds come from that's almost two million dollars yeah we need to do the additional detailed work but with the rate increases you don't want to count on all of that rate to cover the debt but I think uh, the strategy would be to use some of 
the anticipated new revenue to help cover the debt and then look at if there's a gap trying to offset that. Uh, you know, Mike talked about 95% occupancy. That's probably unrealistic initially, but over time you would hope to uh, reach that. You'd want to have a coverage ratio. You wouldn't want to borrow all of that, uh, that funding. So I think that would be part of the detail, but certainly some sort of debt service, whether it was an internal loan uh, or, or, or some other uh, structured financing would be uh, part of the equation. And it was mentioned back in February too with Edgewater that um, you know you, you raise your rates, you're going to lose some voters. And it was mentioned by them that those are usually the voters you don't want to keep, right? They're, um, so, but you would also gain some voters. So it's you're going to lose some, you're going to gain some, and then hopefully with the investment you're making and the they see the the improvements, then you'll bring more voters in. The word gets around and. Um, Hopefully, you're back to when the marina was in its heyday. If this is a you know, if this is a project that the council wants to move forward with, we'll we'll do some of that additional detailed work to bring back a official uh, recommendation. I mean, I think it's a tipping point. We need to figure out we have some resources to actually put money into it. Either do it or don't. And I guess getting back to the FEMA grant. So I think I mentioned this maybe back in February, but. Um, we can't apply for an extension currently. We have to wait till our current extension is up. So that is in August. So the next time we could apply for an extension would be, I think, the end of August. And then we, we, have, we have emailed with uh, the FEMA reps, and they are in agreement that to, const to get an additional extension, um, dredging would qualify for that because of the need for the 400 doc you had to do dredging so we would be allowed an extension um, we could get at least a 12-month extension which would put us back into September of next year um, so we would hope that the construction would be completed by then but I'm sure that if it wasn't we would be given another extension so and it is a safe harbor with the safe harbor act we do have to maintain some minimum things in that facility in there for uh, to keep that I guess I would just I, I I'm fine with it I would just challenge find the money somewhere try to find the way to go about it it's a great resource I had a boat down there a long time ago um, I've got kids now I'm not a boater anymore but you know I think uh, you know you talk about the campground that we talked about the last time you talked about if we could get the Port Authority district to maybe dredge out the rest of it you know you could have canoes and things like that in that um, you know, maybe a C store down the line where you can sell ice, beer, pop, things like that. And then if you do have boating comes back, build a dry dock on the back side of it. You know, you do have potential, but if we do nothing, we should just get rid of it. Yeah, get rid of it would be closed because nobody will take it yeah, as yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Not in its current state. a big swamp. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We already have one of them. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Judith. Just to clarify, so before the next meeting, we're going to have um, right. details on yes. projected revenues, operating costs, maintenance costs. Yeah, I think we would include that in the in the memo, or maybe just send it out to council, or we, or we can include it in the memo with the engineering approval. Yeah, we'll try to get to you in advance, so you get a chance to so, look at it. Yeah, because in the past, we never. I don't think we've done dredging since what 2012. It's been about 15 years. Yeah. And we never had the money to do it. So dredging needs to be included, the cost of dredging. Somehow we gotta figure out how we're gonna pay for ongoing dredging, even if it's that little strip. Yeah, I, I, I talked to a reporter earlier and they asked um, when was the last major improvements done? And I, you know, I, I've only been here for going on 10 years, but I did look back and it's been about 23 to 25 years since the last major improvement at the marina. And that wasn't anything to do in the water. It was parking lots, parking lot lighting, um, uh, some aesthetic stuff to the marina office, some signage, but it, it wasn't really anything that um, added to the um, operational part of the marina. By the way, that little strip of, of dredging is involved is in this budget. It's a million dollars. No, I know. Oh, but going forward, oh, like yes, how yes. often you have to Maintenance. dredge so many yes, yes. every so many. And that's years. we're hoping with the port authority to be able to but potentially do that. Yeah, we're hopeful. But R yeah. really we should have an annual dredging plan. You're doing, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year in dredging a year. Yeah. Um, and that would be part of this going forward it, once the revenue is seen. To yeah, I just want to see that included and not like we ignore that again. 
Any other questions? Dylan? Thumbs up from me. Okay. Moses, you're quiet. <laughs> your go-to well, man. Tell us what you really think. <laughs> Big in your head. <laughs> There's no other questions. We're done with this. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. For that. Motion to adjourn. Second. Move to second. Roll call, please. Alderperson Healy. Ooh, aye. Robinson. Oh aye. Gilbert. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Parker. Aye. And Poulos.